Okay, we're going to try something a little bit different this time. I thought maybe we could go through and try to develop what I would call your consultant toolbox. This is a list of all the little goodies that you could could have that could help you. I got the idea from the idea in the old days of the doctors that came to your house. Some of us are old enough to remember those days when a doctor actually made a house call. And I always brought his little bag along. And that bag had a selection of tools to help, he hoped, cover him for the things that he would need to do that day. And so what I'm thinking of is using that same basic concept and saying that we need a virtual consultant toolbox that we can draw from to help us do our job. Because a lot of times we get there and you know, we're called to this position and we get that feeling like we're left out here alone. And it's a lonely calling. And a lot of things are on your shoulders and you can get scared and worry about not being able to do a good job, you know, or being uh, unsuccessful when you're working with patrons and things like that. And so what we want to do is try to help you to uh, be able to do your job and have as much help as you possibly can at your fingertips and know what those things are. What I'm going to do is mute everybody. And so that's what we're going to do. Brother Gibbons? Yes. Um, it's probably no big deal, but it says Fresno North State Consultant Training, August 2020. Yeah, okay. I'll change the date, but not now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's only eight months into the year. So let's see if we can get going here. So what's on and be in our toolbox? I tried to think of all the different things we could find that would help us, things that will be at your disposal and, and can be used by you to help you resolve any questions, any problems, any issues that you might come in in contact with. And so I've got a list of them here and we're gonna go through each of these and just kind of in a little, kind of a quick little manner and show you things that you can, can use and ways you can use these to help you. So the help center is the first thing. And of course, Family Search has been changing things. And so to find the help center, you need to use the little question mark that's inside the circle that's up at the top of the page after you sign in on every page in Family Search, and then go down to where it says Help Center. And it comes up at the top of the page with the search bar. I would recommend that you don't use that as your primary way to do things, but that you go down the page a little bit further. And we'll show you what I would recommend here in a second. Below that search bar, you'll always find some FAQs, frequently asked questions. Those will be based on whatever the page is that you're working from. In this case, this was coming from the home page in Family Search. So they have frequently asked questions about usernames and passwords and things like that, because you can get to this without being able to sign in. And then hopefully it would help you figure out what to do to be able to sign in if you were having a problem. But below that are the topics. And there's 14 different topics categories. And what they've done is they've got a help center that has 5,000 articles, let's say. I don't know for sure how many there are now, but there were used to be about 5,000. If you use that first search engine, you're going to be searching through all of these topics. And so you may get all kinds of things that happen to have the words that you're using in those articles, even though they have nothing to do with them. Now, the first four of these in the top row, family tree, memories, searching records, and family search account, those four and the temple, which is way down here at the bottom, will probably be the five areas that you would most likely want to click on. 
most of the time because that will cover 90% of the questions you have. But what you want to do is if you have a question on memories, instead of using the search box up above, click on memories and then ask your question. And it will only search through the articles that are classified as memory articles. And it'll help cut down the amount of stuff you have to go through to try to find your right answer. OK, so an example, I've clicked on the family tree icon. And I want to find something about merging records. So I typed in merging records and then clicked on the little magnifying glass to search. And up comes, it says 1047 results. I sure hope I don't have to go through 1047. They try to put the best ones at the top. And so these are actually the first four that came up, it says three, but there's really four of them here. And if you want to read the article, all you have to do is click on the title. So if you click on how do I merge duplicates in my private space and family tree, then it will give you that article. So here's a typical article. It's on a different topic. This one happens to be about what happens to the portrait photo and family tree after a merge. And so this is a typical article. If you clicked on it, it would open up like this. And you'll see that it covers multiple things about the topic. It says if both records have a photo, this is what happens. If the surviving record has a portrait and the duplicate doesn't, this is what happens. If the surviving record doesn't have a portrait and the duplicate does, this is what happens. If you don't like the portrait of the surviving record, this is what you can do. And then what happens when the records are unmerged? And so they will show you all the various possible things that could happen there. And they even give you other related articles down at the bottom in most of these articles. And so really, most of the questions you have, you can get answered if you can get to the right article in these articles that are in the Help Center. And it really does help to spend a little time and explore a little bit and see how it works. Because a lot of times you can save yourself a lot of grief and anguish and searching time or you know frustration time by looking up answers this way. Now, in relating to a related type of thing, there's also help on each of the pages in Family Search. And so when you're on any page in Family Search, you go again to our little icon, the little question mark inside the circle. And right below that, you're going to see some general help, a general help search box. You're going to see the highlights for beginners and then frequently asked questions for that specific page for whatever the topic is that that page has. And we'll show you what we mean by that. So I'm on the home page in Family Search, and I go and I click on the little circle. And so up comes the search engine. I can use that if I want. I will then see some general helps, like how to find a family history center, or uh, we've updated our help menu in this case, or how to do family history, because this might be somebody that's just getting started. But then there'll be suggested topics, and those suggested topics will be based on that page. And since this is the home page, it's going to say, well, what are the features on the home page? How do I change my username and password? How do I remove a photo of a person from my home page? And so they try to give you some possible questions you might have. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can always go to the, to the search box and put it in there and do a search for what you're after. Now that will change from page to page. So when I'm over in tree and I click on the little circle with the question mark, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice that the topics that are the main things that they give me now are 
our updated menu again and how to get started in family history. And now there's questions about pedigree charts and fan charts and living relatives and preparing names for the temple. And so they try to vary the help questions to the type of page you're on. If I go to a person page, the questions will be about entering dates and places and names. So it varies from page to page. And remember the FAQs are just a selection. You always have the little search box where you can go and ask a specific question if you don't see it already listed there. Okay, another example. So I said, um, how do I add an unlinked person? So I'm in family tree and I want to add an unlinked person. They had nothing there for me. So I just type add an unlinked person. And fortunately for me, they recognize unlinked to mean unconnected. And so they give me an article on how do I add an unconnected person in family tree? Because that's a question that comes up quite often. And it takes me, if I click on it, to an article and talks about adding an unlinked person and the suggestion that if you're doing this, you might want to write down that ID number so you can find this person because they aren't going to be linked to anybody in your tree, supposedly. And so if you want to get back to it, you might want to write their ID down. So they try to give you nice little ideas. But at the bottom are the step-by-step steps to do it, telling you the exact things you need to do to be able to add an unlinked person or unconnected person into the tree. And I cut the article off. There was even more down below that. OK, family search community. Now, here's something you may not even be aware of. Family search for years is been concerned with a big issue. And that is they have people come to the family history library, they have people come to the family history centers, and hey, we can help them find when they're there. But what happens when they walk out the door and head home? What can we do for them once they're out of our presence? And so for years, Family Search fought and worried about this and tried to figure out what to do about it. And of course, the pandemic came along and really hastened their efforts. And what they did is they, they envisioned years ago trying to do a social media platform where patrons could go to get help. Bob, I only wanted to keep, you keep losing your voice. You're losing my voice? Well, I'll try to keep my mic in front of me. Okay, so years ago. It goes out. It's not that you. And then it sends back in. That's okay for me. Everybody else, I'm, I'm just fine. I'm okay. I'm fine too. I'm okay. Okay, that must be on your end. I'm fine too. Okay. So, Family Search envisioned a social media site, something like Facebook, where they could have their patrons go to get help when they left the Family History Center, left the library in Salt Lake. And it took them years to put this together. And they've just recently been able to bring it up and start using it. It's still just barely past the beta stage, but it's there. And it's starting to get activity and they're actually directing some things there that we need to talk about. And so it's called the community. And the family search community, you can get there a couple of ways. One way is to click on the question mark and then click on community. You can also find it just by typing community.familysearch.org. Either way, I'll take you to the home page for the community. And this is what that home page looks like. The one thing that's kind of funky, you can be signed into Family Search, but when you come over here, you're going to need to sign in. If you don't see a little circle with your initials, or in my case, your picture, 
it'll say sign in here and the full functionality of the site won't work until you sign in to family search here even though you may already be there okay so this is a community effort to help you in answering your questions it has a search bar up at the top that you can write your question in and ask there i wouldn't recommend that i'll give you some other ideas over on the left hand side there's a q a area that is set up to look just like the uh, almost like the uh, help center and there'll be topics there like temple and like family tree and memories and stuff like this and you go there and you can ask your questions there and they will be handled by missionaries and they'll be handled by the community because there'll be missionaries waiting there to help and community members too under q a and then if you're into research there are other groups not all research groups they can be things like uh, adoption and dna and some other topics to family history consultants temple and family history consultants things like that and there are groups for them but this is especially for research groups and so once you've signed in if you click on q a this is what it'll look like and so you just go to the topic that you have a question about and in fact, now, if you try to contact Family Search, the only way you can get a hold of help is by phone right now, phone or text. The emails will direct you over here to this page. And you'll be asked to go to whatever topic your question is about and ask your question there and get your answer that way. And pretty soon they're going to turn off the phones too. And everybody's going to be directed to come here to get their questions solved. This is where the missionaries that used to help you privately are going to be found to help you in the community now. And so if you have a question about the temple, you come over here and, and click on temple. If you have a question about tree, you go over here and click on tree and you'll get your questions answered and you will show you an example this is from the temple and the temple question and answer area anita asks why can't i print name cards for multiple pages she's discovered that nasty little problem that if you have multiple pages in your re reservation list and you want to reserve people from different pages of these names because you only get to see 20 at a time when you click off of page one and go to page two anybody you had clicked on on page one gets unclicked and so she's saying well how can i do this and you'll notice this dale linda hines i don't know if it's dale or linda but you'll see a little mod behind it that means they're a moderator that means they're a missionary and so they're saying hey hi anita Unfortunately, that's the way it works. If you want to get the three cards on the same page, the only thing you can do is play with the filters. And if you have a lot of names, even that might not help. And then they said to help kind of make things feel a little better anyway, we're going to move your post over to an area called ideas for the community. And this is where suggestions for way to improve the website would go in other words they're going to put their that question over there so that it becomes yet another complaint about this issue because there's a lot of them about this but this is the way it works and by the way this came in at 402 in the evening afternoon at 419 the Heinz answered the question so it took all of 17 minutes to get an answer this is the power of a community working together you don't have to feel like you're by yourself. You've got a place where you can go to ask questions. Now, those questions could be about research. And don't think it needs to be deep stuff. It could just be like, we're trying to find so-and-so in New York, and he was born in 1823. How can we find his parents? 
and they'll give you suggestions. They might even be able to find the parents for you. But to do this, you need to get over into a research group. So you need to go to a group. And so you need to click on groups in the menu. And this menu here will pop up. And then in this case, I wanna do some research. And so I'm gonna click on research groups. And what'll happen is there'll be a big list of them. I just pulled two off and there'll be little boxes and they'll say the name of the group and usually have a map or something to kind of get your attention. And if I wanna do some research in New England, one of the New England states, I would just click on that box and it will take me to that group. So this is an example of the New England Genealogy Research Group. Now, the one thing about the groups is you have to join them. Now, I've already joined this group, so there is no join button. Normally, that button would be right where my mouse is. But once I join it, it goes away. Once I'm in the group, across the top of every group, they'll have a whole slew of links. And this little drag bar will go across the screen and bring up even more. And these are all links of things that you can go to that pertain to that area, that state, that country, that region, whatever it might be. Below that in every group will be what they call announcements. And announcements could be things like how to use this group. In fact, that's what Dick Thurston had put up there was when asking a question about an ancestor, help us by giving the family search ID number for the person so we can go look at that person. They could also be upcoming events. Like if there was gonna be a webinar on New England, we could post it there so that you might wanna go over and see that. And then the discussion area is where the actual questions go. So I pulled out a typical question just to show you. So Tracy asked about Levi Sherman and Abigail Sprague in Rutland Derby, Danby, Vermont, according to the 1790 census. And, and they're saying in that census, there was one adult male and five females, two male children, five females. And they're trying to figure out who the names of the kids are. They said, we know the names of two, Drusilla and Lynn. Lydia, can you help us? Well, ironically, I didn't realize after I pulled this up, I'm the one that answered it. And uh, it, um, what I did is I went over to Ancestry and I found an administration for the estate of Levi. In other words, Levi didn't have a will per se, but he had an administration and it named a couple of administrators whose last names were Sherman. So I thought, well, they could possibly be his sons. And I also found a appointment of guardians for Levi's kids, for a Levi, a Hannah, and a John, who were infant children, as it says, which means they were just underage. And so I, I posted this for Linda, or Tracy, I mean, because it helped her with possible names for the five children, or for five children. And that's the way it works. Now, the other one that you probably have never heard about is my personal favorite because this is where I serve as a missionary. I'm the mission leader over the Family Search Facebook Genealogy Research Group. So this is a paid announcement. Sorry about that, folks. But Family Search, it might surprise you um, in general first. Facebook has over 50,000 genealogy groups and pages. There are Facebook groups and pages on 50,000 different topics. And so FamilySearch started this process that evolved into the community over here on Facebook about 10 years ago. And I was involved in it way back then. Then I went off to other things for years and now I'm back with it again. So we've been around for at least 10 years on Facebook. 
And what we have is we have 16 research groups that are all uh, regional groups because we don't have enough missionaries. We have 25 family ser service missionaries and we manage these 16 groups. And we have about 52,000 members in these groups. And so when questions are asked, there's a lot of people there to help answer the questions. And so the questions can be anything. It can be from how do I research in this area to how do I find so-and-so? How do I get, how do I translate this document? You name it, we get all kinds of questions. The Gibbons? Yes. Um, so this is an international thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we cover the whole world. Oh, good. Thank you. We cover the, and we'll show you that in just a minute. Yes, we cover every country in the world, one way or the other, with a regional group. And some of the groups are big areas, since we only have 16. But it is amazing how in minutes, often, brick walls are broken down. Now, the groups that we have, we have six groups in the United States, they're regional groups. We have five different groups that cover Europe. We have a group for Canada, a group for Mexico and Central America, a group for the Caribbean, a group for South America. And then we have a huge group, Asia, Africa, and Pacific. And that's a huge part of the world, but we don't have a lot of patrons for that area. And so it's, we want to eventually break it down, but quite honestly, we don't have that many patrons as it is, so it's easier just to keep them all together. Now, how do you find us? And how do you find the communities want groups too? The easiest thing to do is just go to Family Search to the wiki. Most of us know how to do that. You go to Family Search, click on Search, and at the bottom of the list is a wiki. And then just put one word in there, Facebook. If you put Facebook in, this page that I have the URL for that says Family Search Genealogy Research Groups will come up. And this is a big, long page. And I've just cut a little piece off. It lists every country of the world, every state of the United States, and other places like England, all the shires, and Canada, all the provinces. And then it tells you in the first column, if there's a group for this area, what group in the community covers it? So Algeria is covered by the Africa Genealogy Research Group in the community. If you click on that, it will take you to that group. For Facebook in the middle column, you would go to the Asia Africa Pacific Genealogy Research Community. Click on that and it will take you straight there. For Albania, you'd go to our Eastern Europe. For Anguilla, you would go to the Caribbean group for us, and so on. And so it's a way to get to our groups real easy. Family search, to search, to wiki, and type Facebook. And you'll be able to go scroll down through this long list, and there'll be a hot link, because these are all hot links. You click on them, and it takes you into either Facebook or the community to the group that you're looking for. So now, how do ours work? Here's a group, this is our US Midwest, covers quite a few states. There's a join button that you'll need to click. I've joined, so mine says joined. Yours would say join. And when you click on that, you will be asked four little, three or four simple questions. And they're just basically, to ferret out anybody who's a bad egg because you know on Facebook there's bad characters and there's often people that are trying to sell uh, sunglasses let's say they go around and try to join every group and then post <laughs> their ads and so we ask some simple questions that uh, a genealogist will know the answer to like what's your level of genealogy interest what part of this region are you researching? Um, how did you hear about us? Do you have any genealogy uh, programs on your computer? You know, something like that. You answer the questions, you get, in, you get into the group. You'll notice this group has almost 7,000 members. So it's got a lot of members. These are people that live in the area often. 
Some of them are professionals and they will give answers for free. Many of them are experts, they're librarians and uh, people that work in archives in this area. So, I mean, we have a wealth of help in these areas to give people help. And we provide other things. We have guides over here that are set up to help you learn how to use our group, how to ask the question, how to find this, how to find that. We have under more a place where you can find this, our surname list, where people can list surnames that they're researching by state and also a place where we have files of resources. We have our own resource system that's even more extensive than the wiki for each one of these states. And so we have all kinds of help for you. But the beauty of it is getting the answers to your questions. So this is a typical one. There's a question asked by Jackie, and it was about a pro, uh, guardianship. And she didn't understand guardianship, essentially. This woman was given guardianship for these four children. The thing never says it's, that's the mother. And she wants to know, is this the mother and how's this work? Well, within one day, there were 17 interactions. In other words, 17 people answered her. And they explained how guardianships worked. One of them found the death date and cause of death from an old bit for her husband, for the husband of this woman, Rachel Frischman. Uh, another one found obituaries for two of the children that named their parents so that that verified that Rachel was in fact their mother. And others found an 1860 census, US census, and an 1865 Iowa census. And so by the end of the day, Jackie was well on her way to being able to work this group or work this family. She had all kinds of help. Over in Europe, I came across this one where Tina is having trouble reading this document. And it's easier to read than the, the picture you see here, but it's still not in English. And she says, I'm having trouble with this bottom part. Could somebody help me? And George came along and he literally translated the entire line across the bottom, every box. And I thought was interesting was this last one where it had a bunch of abbreviations. And he says, in his opinion, it said that this pastor Schreiber was giving approval to a mixed marriage where one partner was Catholic and the other one wasn't. So, I mean, this is a guy that is not just translating, but probably also an expert in researching in that area and understands what's going on. So this was about this gal's great grandfather and his marriage. So when she got through, she said, oh, thank you. You're amazing with this help. In fact, my great grandfather's marriage, woohoo. And you know, just this is the kind of stuff that we see day in and day out. Another one, one last one here. Uh, Lee was trying to find um, in Canada, trying to find a passenger list. He was hoping to find it over in England for a ship leaving for Canada, but there wasn't anything for that. Kathleen says, you know, you're not going to find George an outgoing passenger list. The Dominion didn't keep outgoing passenger lists. She says, you're going to have to find inbound manifests. And Deborah came along a little bit after that. And she found this thing here is from, I think, Ancestry. And it's a U.S. passenger and immigration list for this guy. And Lee says, oh, thank you so much. That's the one. And so, you know, this is, this is just the kind of thing that you get from working with a large group. You can find answers to your questions. OK, and we provide other services. We help inform people about new record sets that are available. We teach them how to use the family search site. We give them lists of upcoming events, seminars, online classes, and anything. And it's free. And you're all welcome to come join us or tell your patrons. If you've got patrons that are actually getting into this, or you know somebody in the ward that does research and needs some help, suggest us to them. 
and show them how to find our groups over in the wiki and they can join whatever they want. Okay, I'll get off my high horse. Family search this summer started 20 minute consultations. The hardest thing with this is finding it. And so this again is one of those outreach things where if you can't come to us, we wanna to come to you. So they'll provide 20 minutes of expert help, but you gotta figure out how to find it. The first thing you need to do is go to the Family History Library homepage. You can Google Family History Library LDS, and you should be able to come to a page that looks like this. Then you have to click on research help. Then on the page that comes up, you go to the little tiny box there that says schedule a free consultation. Now the consultations could be on how to get started in family search, could be on DNA, immigrant ancestors, or just researching in any lo specific location in the world. Now they aren't gonna go research for you. They're gonna teach you how to research. This is not gonna give you your ancestors. This is gonna give you strategies to use. But when you click on that thing, you can click a date and a time. They're gonna ask you to provide them with what information you do know and what you wanna know. And they'll prepare a lesson for you and then get online with you. Okay, similar thing they started this summer was this free lookup service. And that started partly because of the portal being down and partly because the library was closed and they had all these millions of films that nobody could access. And so they've set this up to help us who don't live in Salt Lake and can't get into the library very easily to get a copy of a specific document. Now they're not gonna copy the book for you. They'll copy something specific out of the book or out of the collection. Okay, it's not available in every language. It's available for about 15 languages. So most of the major languages, probably Japanese and uh, uh, Tagalog, whatever it is in the Philippines, German, French, Italian, Norwegian, Swedish, English, Spanish, 15 major languages. And the way to get to this is also a little bit tricky. You go to that Family History Library catalog page again, you go to services this time, services, and then to record lookup service. And when you click on that, you'll get a page where it explains it. And again, you gotta find that little box that says click here and it'll give you a form to fill out. And they'll, they'll send you a PDF if they can find what you're looking for. They'll send you a PDF version of that page. Okay, the family history guide is another place you can go. And we've talked about the family history guide before, so I won't talk a lot about it. It's a place where you can go to get help with A, the partner sites like Family Search, My Heritage, Find My Past, and Ancestry, and also any localities in the world that you're not familiar with. They have whole learning tracks for all of these. They have a menu bar across the top, and that's where you'll start, where you'll either pick one of these websites you want to hone in on, or if you're trying to do research in a country, you'll click on countries to begin with, and then drill down from there to something specific. We'll show you an example. So like, let's say I want to add audio to a memory, and I don't know how to do it. Well, that's in Family Search, so I'll click on Family Search. And when I do that, the Family Search menu drops down. And since this is about memories, I'll click on Memories. Then there'll be a list of goals. These are like learning pods. And one of them is Add or Tag Photos. And so I'll go to that. 
And within that lesson, there'll be a section there that talks about recording an audio file memory that can be attached to a photo. And they give me the steps right there, A, B, C, D. And they're right there for me, spelled out. Now, if you wanted to research a location, and you know, when you go out to help a patron, they always seem to have oddball locations. Oddball means anything you're not familiar with. And so you go to, if you have a problem like that, you go to countries and I want to help somebody do Costa Rica. I have no idea what to do with Costa Rica. Well, it actually is going to fall under North America. So anything from Panama up is technically North America. So it'll fall under North America. And when I click on that, there'll be a menu and Costa Rica is one of the countries there. When I click on it, it will give me a getting started menu for Costa Rica, where they have a family search wiki article on getting started, another family search wiki article on finding records, another one on record finder. Then here's some resources from the Costa Rican Academy of Genealogical Sciences, a hot link Ooh. to that. Some research records at forebearers.io and another Costa Rican resources page, Jewish genealogy encyclopedia for Costa Rica and how to read Spanish writing. They have all kinds of stuff for you. So this is one of those places you can go if you see you're probably gonna get questions asked you can at least go here, see what's there ahead of time. And then when the question's asked, you can take the patron over here and say, hey, I don't know much either, but here's where we can go to learn. Go to the Family History Guide, the FH Guide, or just Google the Family History Guide and it gets you there. Now, in relation to that is the Family Search product, the Wiki. And that's something we should all be familiar with. You know, it actually started 11 years ago. Back in 2008, it's up to 96,000, almost 97,000 articles contributed by you and I. And they cover just about everywhere in the world. And it's especially valuable to help you with finding websites, libraries, repositories that have genealogy records. It's written for genealogists. A wiki is an encyclopedia of genealogy, the best one in the world. And since it's user developed and fairly up to date and comprehensive, it's very good. There are some areas that aren't covered. When you get down to cities, you're often in trouble because First place, there's not as many records in cities, but for countries and counties, provinces, shires, you're probably going to find a wealth of information no matter where you look. And so to find it, you go to the search menu to research wiki, and then comes the home page. You can either search in the search box up at the top put in the locality you're looking for or a topic. If you want Quakers, you could put Quakers in there. There'll be article on Quakers. Facebook, if you want to find the Facebook groups. Then if you don't want to use that search engine, you're looking for a location. There's a couple of things you do. First place, you can go over here to, to re guided research. Many of our countries have guided research help where it'll give you a real simple process for finding birth, marriage, and death for quite a few countries of the world now. Or you can go and click on like North America and pick a North American location or Europe or Asia or Africa or the Pacific, or you can just have a list of all localities and find the place you're looking for. If we were doing Costa Rica, click on North America or just type Costa Rica there. And it'll take you to the page for that location. Almost all of our, our locality pages are set up the same. 
They have things here for getting started. This is where you would begin if you don't know what you're doing yet. Go over here and find out about guided research, how to locate your ancestor in Canada, research strategies. Here will be some research tools. Down here is a list of all, all that we know of Canada online records. It doesn't matter if the records are from Family Search, Ancestry, Find My Pass, we'll list them. Another one is ask the community. It will take you to, in this case, the Canada group in the community. And then over here, we've got some beginning research ideas, things you can click on. Or if you know what type of record you're looking for, like probate records, you can click right here and it'll tell you about Canadian probate records. Okay, partner sites. Now, these are the people that we partner with that we have as members the opportunity to have a free account. To get that free account for your patrons, you don't go to that website. You go to Family Search first and sign in. So the browser has your information. It has your username, your account number, and all that kind of stuff for Family Search. And then you've got to find partner access. You can either type in familysearch.org slash campaign partner access, or you can go to the help center and go down where all those circles were, those 15 or 16 circles. And one of them says partner access. And whichever way you go, whether you use the URL or the help center, you'll get to this page where you can click join for free for the company that they want to join. Now, the one that gives the biggest headaches is Ancestry. Many of our members had a free account for a week or two to try it out. Once they've had that, even if it was 10 years ago, Ancestry knows about them. And it's going to say, you've already got an account. And it won't let them have the free one. If that happens, the only thing you don't come to us, we can't help you. It's an ancestry problem because ancestry says you're already there when you're not. Just Google ancestry phone number because it's the only way on earth you're ever going to get a number form. Ancestry phone number. And you'll get the number. You call them up. The gal on the other end is going to say, oh, okay, you're number 85 today. Let's get you fixed and they'll fix you up because I guarantee you they deal with this all day, every day. A very common thing. But these are all websites that our patrons can see for free. Almost there. Family Search blogs, another thing you might not be aware of. If you just Google familysearch.org slash blog, You'll come to the blog that Family Search has. They have over 12,000 or 1,200 articles, not 12,000, 1,200 on everything. This first one's about helping people do Asian ancestry. This one's on Bastille Day for the French people. Uh, here's one about records update. Here's one about Roots Tech. Here's 20 things to discover and do about Scotland to discover your cultural heritage or your Puerto Rican heritage or Puerto Rican, whoops, Puerto Rican vital records, civil registration and church records. I mean, there's everything under the sun. You go to the blog and then you just Google. You just do a search in it for whatever topic you're interested in. You'd be surprised what you'll find there. And the last one is of course, training for our consultants at Family Search. And again, we're back to our old friend, the little circle with the question mark. And this time we go down to helper resources. And at the bottom of that page, we have our Temple and Family History calling the link. You can go to that to get to Temple and Family History Consultants page. You can also see Training on how to use family search, indexing, 
basics and family history, church policies, all kinds of things. Guided researches there, family history activities, searching the genealogies, which we'll be doing in a future month, all kinds of things. So you've got this huge pile of things that can be part of your toolbox. Hopefully, and the way it'll work when you work <laughs> with patrons is you start by contacting them to find out what they want so that you can be prepared and get from them their helper information so that you can look over their tree, find out what locations you're going to be working in, and then you can go to your toolkit and familiarize yourself so it makes you look <clears throat> like an expert. Because remember, you are an expert if you know one more thing than they know. That makes you an expert. So make yourself an expert so that when you get together with them, you have a prepared lesson and you have the background information you need to guide you. And with that, you'll have a successful and enjoyable experience with your patrons. And if they bring up something you can't answer, you've dug around a little bit, you know where to turn to get the answer because there is an answer out there for virtually anything. Questions? Yeah, Bob, can I ask, this is Jim Canfield, can I ask you a question? Yes. You just mentioned Ancestry.com as far as deal, dealing sort of resurrecting accounts that have sort of died. Um, do you have the phone number handy or could you go no. over it? No, how do we, what do you search for? Just, go, on, just go into Google and type Ancestry phone number. Ancestry phone, phone number. Phone number. Okay. Yeah. That's all you got to do. And what should, we're going to say, I have an account, but it won't let me in. Yeah. You just explain to them that I'm LDS. Okay. I'm trying to get a free account and it's telling me I've already got one. 